I will make this little connection with uh, our development department and I will tell you that we are a platform agnostic agency which means that we're able to pick from any platforms that we need in order to cater to uh, the, well, the needs of our customers and I have sort of the same approach in design. I, I would feel that I am uh, completely tool agnostic so if I need to use a certain tool I will. Uh, however, uh, I would say my favorite currently would have to be Sketch because it's got the ability to have so many plugins like the amazing Croft plugin that helps it integrate with Envision. So I'm able to basically create prototypes straight into my design tool and then manage them and, and do all of that cool stuff. Uh, so that saved me a ton of time and I, I feel that I, I, anybody who hasn't tried Sketch should. Um, apart from that, I also use XD, Photoshop, uh, pretty much anything I, I need to. If I were to be honest, uh, I think that the first place I draw my inspiration from is just purely visual culture and experience. Because initially, uh, whenever I think about how to solve a design problem, uh, I just use the information bank that I have within uh, and then once, once I have a sort of a better idea of, of what I'm aiming, I will obviously go out there and see uh, what's new on uh, word sites, on uh, Behance, on Dribble, or all, all the other cool design inspiration sources. Uh, but initially, I, I would typically trust my experience first. Before I do that, I, I should tell you that each and every project is different and I tend to tailor my process specifically for that uh, particular project and it has to do with uh, the customer's goals and limitations and uh, well, many other things. Uh, but ha having gotten that out of the way, uh, the typical process for me looks like this. Uh, initially, uh, we would do a discovery stage where we would uh, have, uh, have a chat with, uh, with our customers and try to really drill down and understand what they're about and uh, what their goals are with the project, what the opportunities are, as well as all the constraints, because it's important to understand those as well. Uh, and after we feel that we have a very good idea of about the project that we obviously start with research. So we would research uh, their users, we would uh, research competitors, we would uh, do a fair amount of research, but again, it depends on the project. And once we feel that we have all the facts and we understand the problem well enough, uh, that's the point where we start formulating the solutions. This component of uh, analytics to, to the whole thing and a layer of precision where we can uh, draw user insights as well as validation and uh, basically what I feel it, um, it contributes most to my work is eliminating a lot of doubt uh, having, having to do with various design solutions that, that I would be proposing as well as uh, perhaps certain biases that I have as a designer because we are not perfect and eventually we do design for users in the context of the brand. So understanding them and sort of uh, tailoring uh, the experience that we design for them and making sure that we can measure that and we can validate our hypothesis, that is invaluable to me. So uh, yeah, it's definitely helpful. But there's quite a few things that I would like to mention, but I will say this. So 2017 uh, saw us uh, gain quite a few hot buzzwords uh, like um, advanced personalization, like the blockchain, like uh, AI, and uh, all of these beautiful things, obviously VR, which you know, has been a hot buzzword for a very long time. Um, and I think that 2018 will have to do more with accessibility. So basically turning these amazing buzzwords into usable products uh, that don't necessarily have to be very transparent uh, with that technology, but rather very easy to use and uh, well, useful to, to, to the world and their users, obviously. Pixel Pusher Extraordinary. 